Now on to part two. Our scan results are done and we can tell because we've got a nice check mark here that says complete. So we're just gonna click into our scan results and looking at the overview, we can see here that we've got five critical, 38 highs, 59 mediums, 10 lows, and 67 informational. So we're gonna click on the vulnerabilities here and let me make this bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a peek at this and this new version of Nessus actually starts grouping these together. Let's go ahead and hit settings and disable groups. And that'll show us by severity. So look what's coming back up. <laughs> Open SSL, unsupported. Let's check it out. 0.9.6B, 1.1.0. And it's saying, according to the banner, the remote server is running OpenSSL. And it doesn't tell us much about it. We'd actually have to do a little bit of research, click into this, see why this is such a bad thing. But this is absolutely out of date. Okay, so if we're making a screenshot here, we're gonna say, hey, this is out of date. We see this installed version. It's recommended to patch to this version. So if you're taking notes, you can go ahead and add that into your notes for your vulnerabilities. This is insufficient patching. Come back through here. It says even open SSH has remote privilege escalation. It's got remote overflows. So it looks like you could possibly perform an overflow against SSH. So if you did some research and you were able to find a vulnerability with that, that's cool. And we come through here and you see the Apache has denial of service, cross-site scripting. Again, Apache looks like insufficient patching and mod SSL shows up, open SSL shows up. And I mean, we've just got vulnerability after vulnerability. So we would write a lot of these up and depending on the assessment and how the assessment was going, depends on the severity that we're going to write up. Now, if we find remote code execution, we get a lot of access to uh, a client and a client just lights up like a Christmas tree when it comes time to reviewing their scans, then a lot of these, uh, you know, we might report on a lot of these and we might not report on a lot of the lows or a lot of the mediums. But if we're in the opposite situation where, you know, we aren't finding a lot, but there's still stuff to report, then we might report on like, hey, open SSL is, you know, it's out of, you know, it's out of date. And then we go to the next page and we find a low and maybe there's like, okay, there's there's something in here that's related to SSL TLS. This one is an unsupported cipher. We might report that as well, just depending on the potential in how many vulnerabilities that there actually are. So as of right now, it looks like this box is pretty critical. But what we also do as penetration testers is we take all the results in front of us and what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll download this Nessus file. We'll take that Nessus file and there's tools out there to convert a Nessus file into an Excel document and it makes it nice and pretty and we'll hand that over to the client as well. And in the report, it'll say, hey, look, we've covered some of the vulnerabilities. There's no way for us to touch all of them because this is a timed assessment. We focused on the low hanging fruit. We focus on what we could. So please do go look at your Nessus scan results and all the information that we provide to you because it's super important. So again, if we have a client like this where we're gonna have remote code execution, we're gonna have a lot of vulnerabilities, then these things just start to stack up. And this is what a Nessus result looks like. You can click into these, you can get more information and possibly even you know details on how to exploit it and how to uh, solve it as well. So um, there's useful links in here a lot of the times and just, uh, you know, they give you information, but you should always go out and verify and never trust your vulnerability scanner. Just because it says, hey, we detected it, you should go out and look and find it. Just like we had that screenshot from before with the Apache service version, we know this exists. We wouldn't provide a screenshot of the output of Nessus. We would go provide a screenshot that says, hey, we actually proved that we know it's there and you're out of date. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're doing with Nessus and why we're using it and how it could be an advantage to us. Sometimes we're so overwhelmed with everything around us that we might miss some vulnerabilities. And it's nice to just have a scanner detect a lot of vulnerabilities just for us. And it gives us something to look through, something to verify, double check, etc. It's just an extra layer of vulnerability assessment for us. It's a friend in the game. 
So I own two programs as a pen tester, two programs that I pay for. Nessus License is one, Burp Suite Pro is the other. So that's it for this section. Now we're gonna move on to exploitation, really start to get into the fun stuff, talk about some different exploitation techniques you're gonna see, and then we'll do a bunch of box walkthroughs and get into exploit development, and it's about to get so fun. This is the fun part of the course. Up until this point, it's just been scanning, enumeration, learning about the process, and it's been nine hours of course material so far, or almost eight hours of course material, just to get to this point. That's how important I think that information gathering and scanning enumeration are along with the foundations and the materials. You need to know all that before you can just start exploiting machines. So now we're there. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. We're almost halfway through the exploitation part of this course. So once we get to the middle of the course capstone, I think it's going to be really fun and exciting. So that's it. End of spiel. I'll see you over in the next section when we start learning exploitation.